for a long time, people thought it was impossible to go faster than the speed of sound in an airplane because uh, as you approach the speed of sound, you start building up sound waves into shock waves. So once you start getting close to the speed of sound, those sound waves start building up and become actual shock waves that from the ground sound like a boom. That's where we get the term sonic boom. Different parts of a plane accelerate the air. So like the wings will accelerate the air over the top. So the air going over the top of the wing will actually be going faster than the air going around the rest of the airplane. So what happens is the air going over the wings reaches the speed of sound before the actual airplane reaches the speed of sound. And that can create shock waves on the leading edge of your wing. When that happens, you are messing with the flow of air that is going over the control surfaces of your airplane. So what would happen in World War II is a lot of pilots, as they were going into a dive, their wings would be getting close to the sound barrier and creating different pressure zones. And this would disrupt the air that was going over their control surfaces, which means these pilots would lose control and sometimes it would be unrecoverable. The Army Air Force, as it was called at the time, wanted to test this out. And so they contracted with the Bell Aviation Company to make a plane called the Bell X-1. X stands for experimental. Uh, this was the first in a very long line of X planes or experimental aircraft that uh, that line is still going on today. So the X-1, its whole purpose was to see how fast we could go uh, in an airplane. So there are a few different design changes that were made with the Bell X-1. First, it had wings that were very, very thin. So they created very little drag going into the actual path of the aircraft. The X-1 also had to be fitted with a special type of tail in order to maintain control as the airplane was actually going through the sound barrier. On October 14, 1947, Chuck Yeager became the first person to ever break the sound barrier. He went faster than the speed of sound in a Bell X-1. The real Bell X-1 is actually on display at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, DC. So our X-1 is one of the few artifacts in our gallery that is not from the actual mission or a trainer of some type. Um, our X-1 is from the movie The Right Stuff. Have you ever seen the movie The Right Stuff? I have. Yes, it's quite long. I'm not a big Tom Wolfe fan, personally. <laughs> the book's pretty rough, too. I don't know that I even finished the book. Ours was a movie prop, and there were actually several versions of the X-1 in the movie. Um, I can't tell you which one ours is or from what scene in the movie, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right. So the story goes that the night before or before the flight, Chuck Yeager knew he was going to make this historic flight and um, he went horseback riding and fell and broke, cracked a rib or broke a rib or something. Right. And uh, knew that they wouldn't let him fly if he told them. So he didn't tell anyone and he had someone on his crew fashion a broomstick so that he could reach up and close the hatch. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think that one of the things that, at least for me being a lay person, is that I did not realize that he didn't just get in this plane and take off from the ground. He yeah. was, was a B-52, I think, right? B-29? At that time, it was a B-29. Yeah, that's another thing I didn't talk about. So the plane was actually dropped from a B-29. Well, so the point being that it wasn't that he had to climb in on the ground and then kind of take his little broomstick and yeah. close it. He was like up in a B-29 and had to climb down a little ladder yeah. while it's flying and then get into the cockpit and then close the door. Yeah. See, even if I had all of my ribs intact, I'm not doing that. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, so Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier, not 100%. Yeah, <laughs> he's a little rough. Broken up. ribs. You know, they really are a special breed. I guess you know the whole po to come full circle. They really did have the right stuff, didn't they? That's not important. I don't know why I talked about the Concorde. Doesn't matter. I'm not, right, I can't put right. that in the video. <laughs> this is supposed to be a little more serious. <laughs> The joke is that you never find out secondhand that there's a test pilot in the room.